you all for coming from all over the state of Florida. I know many of you have come far and wide because I uh, may only know you on social media, some of you, which uh, I'm grateful for in this day and age. I appreciate you if you found out through another uh, way to find out about these rallies. This one, um, this one is an important one. I've been following Sable Trail trying to enter Florida for the last four years. A few months ago, I was only saying three and a half years, but it looks like four right now. And uh, early on in North Florida, which is where I live in Fort White, we found out that it was cutting through the Santa Fe River, and that's how I first found, actually through the Itchitechne or the Santa Fe or both, and that's how I first found out about it. A uh, long, long story, relatively short. They are constructing it as we speak. If you drove here, you probably drove over it. How many of you have done that? Yeah, most of us have, and that's because it's a god-awful long corridor that's cutting through the state of Florida. I don't think anybody has missed it yet. However, I think a lot of people don't know what it is. A lot of people still think it's a road. They still think it's a trail. They still think it's something other than a 36-inch gas transmission pipeline that has the potential to cause some serious harm to our water bodies and our land and our communities if something were to go terribly wrong. It's already going terribly wrong in that it's cutting down old, old growth forests because it's being put in our rural landscapes and it's being put out into our areas of Florida where we often have more wildlife than we have human life. And I think that's why a lot of people don't know about it. So we're here today because Dunellen is kind of a center point for this thing in that it has a break in its line called the Crystal River Pipe. And that particular pipeline off of Sable Trail is going to Duke Energy. How many of you work for Duke Energy? Well, you're not going to raise your hand if you did here. <laughs> Actually, Duke Energy employs a lot of the people that live in this community. And while we are very concerned with employment regarding you know, people's livelihoods, I think most of us understand that there are other ways to get our energy and we would like to see people that are employed in the energy um, sector to find out ways to find renewable energy jobs, jobs in solar, jobs in wind, jobs in play, or an energy that actually doesn't harm our natural resources but protects us in the longevity of our of the energy that we use under our rooftops and in our in our lively or in our in our in our life experiences. So. Crystal River is breaking away. It's going to the Duke Energy plant, which, if I'm not mistaken, folks that are from around here is right over here somewhere. Um, the pipeline also is going to, um, the, um, the neighborhood of Dun Allen is also going to be experiencing a compressor station. Uh, these are places where the, uh, it's a, I'll, I'll share a little bit about a compressor station because many of you may not understand. This is a, almost a, 700, it's actually 685.5 miles long from Alabama. Approximately every 100 miles there is a compressor station. Other than that, it's a pipe like you see out in the, in the, in the um, wilds that you came in from, you see a pipe, but it needs to have a turbine system that creates pressurization in the pipe to move it through for the next 100 miles. So, Don Ellen has been unlucky enough to get a compressor station in their backyard. And frankly, if it wasn't Don Ellen, it would be some other community because that's what we're faced with is this pipeline. We've gotten it moved several times, but what happens is you get it moved or you get something like a compressor station moves and it ends up somewhere else. We just don't want it at all, right? Right! Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down. So the compressor station here will um, affect the environment and the community around it. It actually, it, the, the Dunellen compressor station actually has more people that live in, in the proximity of the compressor station. Uh, so did Albany, Georgia. Um, they have a lot of people living near their compressor station. The one in um, Swanee County doesn't have many people, but the people that move there, I want to tell you, moved which is a really sad story. There was a family next door to it, I think had eight children, six children. They moved, they just up and left their property because they knew inherently that this thing was too risky to expose their family to the problems with the compressor stations. They leak. 
They, 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 they leak the methane. The methane is what's in the pipeline. These things have a tendency to leak at these particular locations, and they're loud. They're loud 24-7. They're a light hum that's audible to anybody that lives around it. And there's lights. There are lights 24-7, so you never have any rest if you live around a compressor station. So, um, so that's one, those are several reasons why Dunellen is kind of a hot spot for us in our efforts to stop Sable Trail. The other part is right on the um, going west is the Green Swamp. You're going to hear more about that as we um, continue to try and stop Sable Trail. They plan to trench through the Green Swamp, which is a area of critical state concern. That's a, that's a very protective state designation for this particular body water of water. Um, it's water that we uh, also get drinking water needs met from in the Green Swamp. If you don't know about it, learn about it. We don't want that swamp drained. We want that swamp protected and they're planning to trench five miles into that swamp, which will cause turbidity and other issues in that waterway that we don't want damaged because it's important to, to um, our drinking water. So um, if anybody wants to learn more about this type of effort, uh, where you can have a, have a voice and feel like you're um, doing something to stop Sable Trail, not just sitting at your computers at home and learning about it through our media that we have available to us. On the social media platform, on the Facebook platform, there is a Facebook page that we've set up called, uh, if you do the at symbol, the, right, the word protect, and then F-A-S-T, protect fast. It will pop up, protect Florida against Sable Trail. That is the one site that we've been able to manage most of the rallies and most of the marches and most of the demonstrations through. So that'll give you a good heads up on when the next one is. The other thing I really want to emphasize is while these are so important and so vital because without them you would not know what we're dealing with, I also want you to be aware we are trying to find, and we know they exist, violations and non-compliances associated with the permit the permitting of this pipeline and what that requires is more, yay, more action on your part and on your behalf to help us protect this, uh, to protect our water and land. And so we've asked for witnesses, where I come from in the Bible Belt up in North Florida, anyway, witnesses to go out and witness the destruction of this particular construction pipeline happening right now in our terrain in Florida. So if you go to public roads only, I do not recommend trespassing because they will arrest you. We have seen that time and time again, too many times, 25 arrests so far. Uh, if you go to a public access and you take a photograph of what you're seeing and you put it on the social media page called uh, at symbol, Sable Violations, which is uh, Sable Violates Florida, sorry, Sable Trail violates Florida. We are compiling all of the information regarding uh, violations and non-compliances. If you have a drone, even better. It's not illegal to take pictures. They cannot stop you from taking pictures. It's important to us because we're finding, for instance, with turbidity. What is turbidity? Turbidity is when you're in the water and you're kicking up your heels and there's sand in the water column and you don't see your feet anymore. <laughs> yeah, has everybody been there yet? I've noticed that too. FBI is now monitoring all of us, just if you're not aware. Hi! Everybody wave at the FBI! The ACLU is the one to take that up with. So is it violating our rights that FBI, FBI might be um, in here monitoring us? <laughs> I'm working on the trail. The civil rights issues are addressed in that particular observance of your social media platform at this moment in time. So back to turbidity. <laughs> it's okay. So turbidity is a concern because our water is being affected by the construction of this pipeline. They're affecting 704 water bodies in the state of Florida. And if they, they being Sable Trail construction companies, there's 
five or six construction companies I've lost track. That's why it's moving so fast also. There's not just one, there's five or six. If they're causing turbidity in the water at a certain level of turbidity and they have to report this, before, during, and after the construction at that particular place in the water body, they have to stop. And DEP, our Department of Environmental Protection, can actually revoke the permits if it reaches an, a level that has harm. We don't know what they're doing because there's very few reports. And if they're telling us that this pipeline is 80% almost finished, where are all the reports before, during, and after? in the water column, up here, up here, and down here, three different levels of reporting. I'm telling you, we have a working group that's collecting violations and non-compliances, and we are not seeing those logged in the DEP permitting process. These are bigger ideas. If you want to get involved with that, those are important things that we actually feel could shut it down. These are things that matter. These are things that are really important that are required in the permitting. So that's how we're trying to approach it this point in time because it has to be a legal place to stop it. Congressional leadership needs to be the ultimate ones that stop it. State people are also important, your state elected officials, to get them involved. Senator Nelson, Representative Gwen, Gra Gwen Graham have taken an interest in this, although they haven't taken a position with the new administration in our federal government. Um, we'll probably see some... some, uh, some problems with that as you all can imagine. I'm not going to talk forever because we have so many other speakers here. 